Good morning, everyone. My name is Arden, and welcome to Allura Road Online Services. We are so glad that you decided to join us here today. If you'd like to dig a little deeper into our sermon series, Win the Day, you can check out our website at ercf.ca. We would love for you to stay connected with us on our Facebook and Instagram pages, but for right now, let's worship together with the band.
Our job is to consecrate ourselves to God. And if we do that day in and day out, God is going to show up and show off. Flip the script. If you want to change your life, you have to change your story. Kiss the wave. The obstacle is not the enemy. The obstacle is the way. Eat the frog. If you want God to do the super, you have to do the natural. Fly the kite. How you do anything is how you'll do everything. Cut the rope. Playing it safe is risky. Wind the clock. You do not find time. You have to make time. Seed the clouds. You have to sow today what you want to see tomorrow. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Win the day. God is interested in your today. We're starting a seven-part series uh, thanks to Mark Batterson and his wonderful, biblical, inspired book called Win the Day. God is so interested in your life that he wants you and I to focus on today. So it doesn't matter how great your past has been or how terrible your past has been. What's most important is your present, your today. No matter how bright your future seems to be or no matter what feelings of foreboding and uncertainty you feel when you think about the future, what really matters is your today. Jesus taught us how to navigate and balance the relationship between our past and our future and today. Jesus taught us in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. We call it the Lord's Prayer. He taught us how to nullify the mistakes and sins from the past by praying, Lord, forgive us our debts or our sins as we have forgiven our debtors. We have to face the past. We have to deal with the past whatever way we need to. Ask forgiveness dispense forgiveness in order to have an effective today. Talking about navigating the uncertainties and the challenges of the future. Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, deliver us not into temptation. Uh, don't deliver us into evil. Well, He's talking about the future and entering into that and asking for God's help as we face the challenges of the future. And then for today, Jesus taught us to pray, give us today our daily bread. Now, uh, personally, I would have appreciated weekly bread or better yet, monthly amount of bread. I want more things now so that I can go along without trusting him as much. So more stuff now means I trust him less. And Jesus is not going to do that. He, he wants us to trust him every day. Do you know that when Jesus talked about taking up our cross, do you remember when we're supposed to do that? Every day. Uh, do you remember what the expiration date was on the miracle food manna that God gave the Israelites in the desert for 40 years? To, do you remember how long it lasted? For the day. Uh, they couldn't save it up. They needed new bread every single day. Do you remember what the deadline is on anger that you're feeling? Uh, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let it last more than a day or it's going to become toxic and hurt your life. How about God's mercies? Do you remember how often he gives us his mercies? They're renewed every day. Uh, do you remember what the Bible says about being joyful and glad and how often we should do that and be that way? Actually, the Bible tells us this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. It's every single day. God is interested in your todays. We are now in the first week of February, and that means that January is done. And so if statistics remain true, that will mean of all of the people that had New Year's resolutions in the beginning of January, 75% of them have already failed. Why is that? 
It's because people focus on big annual goals that they set rather than focusing in on each day, small increments. And, and really that's what this series is all about. It's about win the day, seven habits that are gonna bring you success in your life. Now, when I talk about habits, I am not talking about we're gonna to start to get up early, we're gonna exercise, we're gonna pray, we're gonna read the Bible, we're gonna eat chocolate, and we're gonna send Pastor Jim an encouraging text every single day, and those are the habits that we're gonna check off to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about seven biblical concepts and principles that we can apply into our lives so that our life today is successful and filled with all the richness that Jesus designed it to be filled with. And so that's, that's what the habits are all about. Well, the first habit is called flipping the script. You see, our lives are really a story that is told. We talk about the story of our life. And usually because of things that have happened to us in the past, we tend to think about ourselves and our life in a particular way. We tell the story of ourself and our life in a, in a way. It's, it's like the script of our life. For example, let's suppose that you grew up in an unfortunate circumstance and you weren't loved by your parents and it was a really difficult upbringing. Well, very likely you have a script that goes uh, through your mind and it talks about how you're not worthy and and I, I could say I'm not loved. I'm not worthy. My life's never turned out to be anything important and on and on it goes. And so there's this script, there's this tape that's playing in our minds every single day that refer to how we look at ourselves and what we think about our life. I'm no good. I'm not smart enough. I didn't go to school. Nothing good ever happens in my life. How can God use me? My future is going to be dark. I'm, and on and on and on the script goes. And what God wants is to flip the script in our life as we remember who we really are. Well, let's go back a number of thousands of years to the Jewish nation, the children of Israel, as they were brought out after 300 years of slavery and God brought them out. He, he threw a series of miracles we call the 10 plagues. God delivered them from the most powerful empire on the face of the earth the Egyptian empire, and God brought them out and flipped the script in their lives. They lived as slaves for 300 years. They thought like slaves. They behaved like slaves. They were slaves. And God changed the script and set them free. And now they were his people. So God flipped the script by giving them a new identity, but they still thought like slaves. Numbers chapter 11, the weirdest thing that I think I've read in a long time, verses 1 to 6 gives the whole story, but they are complaining about the food, the miracle food that God gave them every day. It was called manna. And they're complaining about it. And they, they want something different. And so this is what they said. They said, we remember that in Egypt, we had fish given to us for free. And we had cucumbers and leeks and garlic and onions and all that we can eat. What? We had fish given to us for free? What are they talking about? Oh yes, they were beaten. They were whipped by their, their, their taskmasters. They didn't have any freedom at all. But yeah, I guess they got the food for free, but they were slaves. And what had happened was they remembered back to the past. They're, they're caught up in their slave mentality. They haven't embraced their new identity. And they are romanticizing the toxic, destructive past that they experienced. Why did that happen? Because they've forgotten who they were. They forgot their new identity. Identity is everything. All right, as a Jesus follower, God has given you a new identity. What that means is that a new story is starting and, and the story is co-authored between you and God. You have agency with God to, to write a new story. And we have to look at the past 
squarely and we have to understand and discern what, what are the scripts that go through my mind because of the past? I've got to be able to deal with the past in a way so that I have victory in my today, in my present. And the way I do that is by flipping the script, by identifying what, what are these things that I think all of the time about myself and about my life. And I have to identify them because my identity will change everything in my life. Well, it was 1934, and there was a young Baptist pastor from Atlanta who decided he was going to take an ocean liner across the Atlantic to go for the very first time to the Holy Land. Now, his name is Pastor Mike. Mike King was his name. So Pastor Mike went on this trip to the Holy Land, and on the way back, he also rendezvoused for the Baptist international convention that was being held in Germany. While in Germany, he became more aware of the work of the great Protestant reformer, Martin Luther. That, that would have been like 400 years earlier. 1517 is the, the date when he famously uh, started the Reformation by nailing his 95 theses against the Wittenberg Chapel door. Well, as, as uh, Pastor Mike was learning and was so taken up and engaged with the work of Martin Luther, how he stood up against the corruption of the ecclesiastical religious system of the day. He was so inspired to take that same heart and mind to fight the racial injustice that he experienced in his country. And so in, in honor of the legacy of that great reformer, Martin Luther, my, Pastor Mike changed his name from Mike to Martin, actually Martin Luther. And so he changed his name from Pastor Mike to Pastor Martin Luther. And as a matter of fact, Pastor Mike, sorry, Pastor Martin, had a five-year-old boy who was his namesake, also called Mike. And he changed the name of his son to Martin, Martin Luther, actually. And for the rest of little Mike, little Martin's life, his family and close relatives, they still called him Mike. But we would know him with a different name. We remember him as Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., Change your story, change your life. Flip the script by understanding your true identity and see what God will do in your life. New names in the Bible are, are common. Abraham had his name changed to Abraham. Sarah, his wife, became Sarah. Jacob became Israel. We have Simon becomes Peter and Saul becomes Paul. And what happens with a change of a name is a change in identity and purpose. And the script from the past is flipped and a new story is written. And it's a story where God is so deeply, deeply involved. Well, today is Super Bowl Sunday. And so I want to bring us back Oh, lots and lots of years ago, way back to the 80s. And I like to talk about a four-year period where Bo Eason was the best safety, strong safety in the NFL. Now, his career was, shut, was cut short after four years because of an injury. But I'd like to retrace the steps to his success way back to when he was nine years old. At nine years old, he drew a self-portrait of himself a stick figure, and underneath the stick figure, he wrote as a nine-year-old who obviously loved football, Bo Eason, best safety in the NFL. And so you can imagine as uh, Bo, the nine-year-old enthusiast, grows up, goes to high school, goes to the first football practice, and at the first practice, the coach weighs everybody, measures everybody, and Bo comes home totally demoralized and he says to his dad the coach says I'm too small to play football you see he was five feet tall and weighed 100 pounds he said coach says I'm too small to play football they measured me and I'm too small his dad without skipping a beat said did they measure your heart and so he took the script 
that had been written for his son, that he's too small, he'll never make it, he'll, he'll never reach his dream of a nine-year-old to be the best safety in the NFL. And he flipped the script by telling him a story. You see, Bo's dad had, had worked for a period of time as a ranch hand. And he said to his son, son, on a ranch, the ranch dog is, is worth so much. In fact, sometimes works more than, than 10 men because what the rancher will do is when a litter of dogs is born, he'll look at the smallest, the runt of the litter, and he'll wrap a, a string around the, the, the neck of the, of the dog to delineate it from the rest of the dogs. And after 12 weeks, the rancher will give away all the rest of the dogs and he'll keep the runt because the runt, being the smallest, has had to fight for everything against his dominant older brothers and sisters. He's had to have, uh, you know, a, sm a smarter outlook. He's had to work faster and he's got to be more determined and have a bigger heart than all the rest of the dogs. And that makes him more effective than everyone else. And he said, Bo, you're the runt of the litter. And now you've got to work harder and smarter and be faster than everybody everybody else. And so right then at the, after the first football practice, Bo Eason decided he was going to make a contract with himself and he would be, though he was the runt of the litter, so to speak, he would be the hardest working player and he would be the first one to football practice and he'd be the last one to leave. And so it was in 1984 that Bo Eason was the very first safety that was drafted in the 1984 NFL draft. Two years later, he had the honor of being on the All-Pro team. He was drafted to, that was in, being part of the Houston Oilers. Then he was drafted to the San Francisco 49ers. And at the very first training camp, he arrived to the practice field one and a half hours before it was scheduled to start. But he wasn't the first. The first football player, was Jerry Rice, who arguably is the greatest wide receiver in all of NFL history. And apparently Jerry Rice was living by the same script as Bo Eason. Well, Bo Eason's, as I mentioned, Bo Eason's uh, NFL uh, time was cut short by an injury. He went on to be a motivational speaker. He went on to, to uh, write a screenplay and a movie about his life called Run to the Litter. And even to this very day, he shares uh, the stage with Anthony Robbins and, uh, Robbins and all other all high-profile motivational speakers because he lived by the script that his father gave him. Flipping the script is taking the thoughts that we and others uh, thoughts of defeat, thoughts of, of uh, negativity, and flipping them because of an awareness of our identity. And as believers in Jesus, we've been given a new identity and a new script that God wants us to follow, and it will change our lives. Abraham's inner script told him that he was too old. Jeremiah's inner script told him that he was too young. Moses' inner script told him he was unqualified. Joseph's inner script told him he was overqualified. Gideon's inner script caused him to suffer from uh, an inferiority complex. Jonah's inner script caused him to suffer from a superiority complex. Peter made too many mistakes. Nathaniel thought he was too cool for school. Uh, Saul, uh, as we know, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. David, he truly was the runt of the litter. But all of that didn't matter. Those scripts didn't matter. God flipped all of the scripts because he had different plans for their lives. And for you and I to have an effective today, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that he wants us to experience the success that the new life in Christ has promised us. And what you believe about yourself and your life, the script that you follow, the story that you tell about yourself and about your life will determine whether your today is successful or a failure. The story that you tell about yourself and about your life will be a success or be a failure. And it'll be determined by what you say. God wants you to face the past. 
to look at these scripts that we, we suffer from. I'm no good. I'll never make it. I'm not good enough. I don't have enough education. I'm too, uh, I'm too small. I'm too light. I'm too short. I, ca- I can't become a, a safety in the NFL. All, all of these scripts, whatever they might be for your particular life. And God wants you to realize what he thinks about you. He wants you and I to understand what he says about us so that the scripts can be totally flipped and we can change our story and change our life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that in Christ, you are a new creation. You're a new person. Psalm 17 verse 8 says that you are the apple of God's eye. That means that you're precious, that you're special, and that he's going to guard you and protect you from harm and evil. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says that you are God's workmanship. You are the poetry of heaven written in the flesh. And he's got wonderful things prepared for you to do. Romans 8, 37 says that you're a conqueror. In fact, you are more than a conqueror through the one, Jesus, who loves you. And 2 Peter 1, verse 3 tells us that today you have everything you need to be successful in your life. No matter what the script has been in the past, no matter what the story has been, it's time to flip the script. It's time to change your story, to change your life. It's time to understand your identity and what Jesus says about you and believe it and rehearse it and say it and think it and speak it out loud so that you can experience the beauty, the wonder of your today. Thank you.